Hi, we are here in Curacao with Kate Furby. Today, take a dive with us into the clear blue waters to find out what a coral actually is and how it can come back from the dead. We are PhD Comics. And we want to know why. Hi, we are here in Curacao with Kate Furby. Kate is a marine biology grad student at the University of California, San Diego um, with the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So Kate studies coral reefs, but that's about all I know. <laughs> so a coral is an animal that builds a like a rock with a slimy thin layer of tissue on the outside that's alive. We call it the coral skeleton, and that makes all the 3D structures that you see when you go to a reef. As it's growing every year, the coral lays down another layer of rock. Okay, so it like, it poops out its skeleton. It doesn't, it doesn't come well, out of that hole. Well, what's a scientific term? <laughs> it precipitates, precipitates calcium carbonate. calcium carbonate, which is also limestone. Yes. Right? Okay. So the pretty colors we see, that's the living part? That's the living part. And actually, a lot of the color from the coral comes from a symbiotic algae that lives inside of the animal. So since the algae is like a plant, it gets its energy from the sun. Mm -hmm. And it gives some of its energy to the coral, and the coral in turn is like protecting this algae that normally would be like floating around in the ocean or something, right? But now it's evolved to live inside the coral. Okay. So the algae helps the coral get extra energy from the sun. Oh, because the algae can photosynthesize the energy from the sun. Yeah. So when we talk about coral bleaching, it's when that algae is actually ejected from the animal. And then it looks white because you can see the skeleton through the coral. Actually, we're not clear on if it's the algae leaving the coral or the coral pushing the algae out. Mm -hmm. But either way, the symbiotic relationship has broken down. With climate change, these bleaching events are becoming more frequent and also more um, prolonged. And so corals, a lot of times now, are just completely dying after the bleaching event. They're sensitive. They're sensitive babies. But they're important for the ocean, right? They are, they're super important. The coral reefs out here protect um, islands from storms. So you have like a big storm coming in, the coral reef will actually slow down that wave action and protect the island from storms. Wow, so like tsunamis would be a lot more common if there weren't coral reefs. Tsunamis would be a lot more damaging if damaging. there weren't coral reefs. Because they would be bigger. They would hit the island harder. So that's just one aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Coral reefs also provide habitat for a lot of animals. We like to eat fish. A lot of island communities get most of their income from like recreation on the coral reefs or fishing on the coral reefs. Where that slug thing go? So all these things are important in various ways. When I'm talking about how a coral grows, here's each polyp would sit in these little holes. Mm -hmm. At this point, this polyp was alive, right? Each year he lays a little bit of rock and moves up. So Kate, we're on this beautiful island and we know that you study corals, but what exactly do you do with corals? So I actually look at what I call recovery mechanisms of coral reefs. So earlier we talked about coral bleaching. Yeah. And there are a lot of different ways that you can kill a coral, but we don't know that much about how to get coral reefs back once we've lost them. I want to find the story of the one coral that went through a really hard time and almost didn't make it and then pulled through. The little engine that could. The little engine that could. A lot of the research that I've done so far has been in a place called Palmyra. It's a small atoll directly south of Hawaii, right on the equator. And we found that there's one coral in Palmyra that dies during a bleaching event. It looks completely gone and completely dead. And then a couple years later, it starts to come back from cryptic tissues. Cryptic tissues. Like a zombie. The coral, cryptic like from the crypt, like from the zombie. Hidden. Ah, I'm going to feed you. Grow again. Grow again. The species of the coral is called Superfusa. 
So I can watch it bleach, it goes white, and then it disappears. The skeleton is still there, but algae and other things are starting to come in and take up that space. And then a year later, I see it start to grow out from cracks from under other corals. I want to know, did the coral come back because of baby corals from somewhere else? Or did the coral come back because there were surviving adults that regrew? But now we have a new tool that is called the Photomegatron. The Photomegatron. Wait, really? <laughs> the Photomegatron. That's like super fuse that needs the Photomegatron. It's basically two SLR cameras mounted in a frame and you swim it over the reef on scuba. And it takes a bunch of pictures. And so now you have like 100 square meters of reef and a bunch of photos that you've mapped together. So you can zoom in and see a baby coral or you can zoom out and see like a big section of reef. I mean, it's really beautiful here, but why are we here in Curacao? I have a friend named Kara Simonson. Okay. She has been doing all of her master's thesis work here. And she needed someone to help her. Okay. And I was like, I'll go to Curacao and help. Oh, very nice of you. But I also want to scope it out as a potential research site. All right, Kate, well, thank you so much for bringing us out here and telling us about the really cool work that you do to save the corals and figure out how they can come back from the zombie apocalypse. Can we get in the water? Yeah. <laughs> it's really pretty yeah, and loud. Yeah, let's go, for sure. All right. Pressurized, and when it becomes pressurized, that fine little glass layer on top pops off. 